Hi, this is Nathan Oxenfeld with Integral Eyesight Improvement in Asheville, North Carolina. First of all, I just want to thank everyone who has been subscribing to my channel, watching my videos, trying out the practices, and especially giving me feedback about the experiences you've been having and also questions that have arisen as you've been practicing. So today I wanted to spend some time answering some of those questions. Our first question comes from MJ. Back in March he asked, is this the real Bates method? And that's a great question because that's the exact same question that I had when I was originally searching around on YouTube and around online for a, a Bates Method teacher. Because as I was searching it seemed like I was encountering a good amount of fluff or things that seemed almost like scams, um, things with pretty interesting claims and money back guarantees and things like this. And so you'll probably find a lot of that online. But the reason that I chose my vision teacher, Dr. Jerry Ann Tabor, with the Vision Training Institute out in California, was because she is in direct teaching lineage of Dr. Bates and Margaret Corbett, who continued teaching after Dr. Bates passed away. So I pride myself in teaching the original Bates method. Um, I've got Dr. Bates's original book, Perfect Sight Without Glasses, from 1920. Um, I've read through that. That's my primary foundation for my teachings. I do incorporate other practices from yoga and meditation and other holistic healing modalities, but the original Bates method is what I teach. So thank you so much for asking that. Our next question comes from Bill, and he asked about astigmatism. He asked me to make a video about astigmatism. Uh, because he experiences double images from a problem with the cornea. And you're right, Bill, that does sort of warrant a whole separate video, which uh, I do have a plan to film. But in the meantime, I did send you some specific practices that are designed to target astigmatism in particular. So definitely continue practicing those. And from Dr. Bates, his main thing with astigmatism was to ignore astigmatic images. What that means is, if you see double images, you need to be able to determine which one is the real image and which one is the double or the shadow. And only pay attention to the real one and stop paying attention to the, the false image. Because once you stop feeding those astigmatic images, they'll begin to dwindle and your vision will be less doubled and more single. And I speak from experience because I used to have astigmatism as well, and no longer do I experience those doubles or triples or quadruples sometimes. And you're right, it is a problem with the cornea. The cornea is misshapen, which creates those uh, refraction errors. But when you release the tension and strain from the muscles around the eyes, that loosens the grip it has on the cornea and the cornea goes back to its normal shape which gets gets rid of those double images and similar to that question um, from Rainsey's in May she was asking about nystagmus which is uh, a nervous problem where the the eye um, sort of jitters or moves uncontrollably pretty quickly and so just just like astigmatism for nystagmus anything that you can do to promote relaxation and calm down your nervous system is going to benefit both of those problems. So specifics for both of those would include palming, sunning, and the long swing in particular. Those are all going to be really good to promote relaxation and decrease strain. So anything to calm down your nervous system and bring you to a state of relaxation is going to help decrease both astigmatism and nystagmus. Brian Wu asked in July, after I'm done palming, why do I feel like it's too bright and my eye hurts? That's because when you sun, your pupils close down because of the increased light levels. When you go into palming right afterwards, your pupils dilate from the darkness. And so when you remove your palms and re-enter the light, your pupils are dilated and it is, is very bright. So whenever you come out of palming, you always want to do sunning again after you palm. And that'll give your pupils a chance to close back down and readjust to the light levels. Uh, you can also, 
if you're just outside and it seems really bright, you can just face the sun, do a little bit of sunning, and then instead of palming, just open your eyes back up because your pupils will have closed down nicely. So that's a great question to clear up. LF asked us another question about the sunning. Uh, they have a, a white reflective wall and we're asking if they could do the sunning there facing the wall with the, the sun reflecting off. And that's totally fine. You can just face the wall and do the sunning as if that was the sun. For the most benefit though, I would suggest trying it facing directly towards the sun, close to sunrise or sunset when the sun is lower in the sky and it's less intense. And that way you'll absorb the most benefits from the full spectrum sunlight. Our next question is from Steve. He asked in response to the yogic eye movements video, do you ever let your eyes cross? Can you do another video letting your eyes cross and demonstrating that? So the answer to that is yes, you can incorporate crossing your eyes into the yogic eye movement practice. In that video, I showed how to look up, down, left and right, around in the circles, all directions, you can go diagonally, but I didn't do any crossing. So thank you for pointing that out. And crossing your eyes, you may have heard as a child or at some point in your life that not to cross your eyes because they'll get stuck that way, which is a myth. It's actually a really good way to preserve your near vision because in order to focus on anything up close, your eyes have to converge or cross. And a lot of people when they hit the age of 40 or 45 and they start to lose their up close vision, a lot of times the issue is that the internal recti muscles on the inside of each eye lose their flexibility and their ability to turn each eye in to focus on a point up close. So I'll demonstrate uh, how you can do that on your own. So there's three different points that you, can, that you can cross your eyes at. The first one is just right in the center. So if you're able to, you can just cross your eyes straight ahead, sort of like at the bridge of your nose, and then release and close and breathe. If you can't just automatically cross your eyes, it might help if you have an object to focus on. So if you hold a pen or a pencil, you can just focus on the tip of the pen as you slowly bring it in and just watch it come and get closer and only bring it you know close enough so it's not a strain you want to stay nice and relaxed while you do these the second point is to look at the tip of your nose so looking down and in and holding keeping everything nice and relaxed coming back to center closing and breathing The third point is looking up and in at the center of your forehead or your third eye. So this time you look up and in and make sure just like all the other yogic eye movements to keep your entire face relaxed, your eyebrows relaxed, your shoulders relaxed and breathing nice and easily as you hold and then coming back to center, closing and breathing. Someone also asked if you can do the yogic eye movements with your eyes closed or while you're palming and that both of those options are great too. So with your eyes closed, you can cross your eyes, look down and in, up and in, go around in a circle. You can do it while you're palming as well. That's a great way to, to guarantee that you're doing the yogic eye movements in a relaxed way. So I hope that helps clear up some of the questions you've been having and I encourage you to keep sending me more questions so that I can film more of these Q&A videos um, and also just sending more questions as I film more videos teaching more of the practices. So thank you again so much for subscribing and watching and I hope you have fun continuing your practice of improving your own eyesight.